speaker. Um, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, so our next talk uh, is by Yura Perov uh, on multiverse, causal reasoning using important sampling and probabilistic programming. Hello. Hello. Setting up the screen. I hope you see the screen. Yes, we can see it. Thank you. Hello, I'm Yura Perov. Uh, thanks a lot to the organizers uh, for uh, the conference and for the opportunity and to everyone for the participation and con contribution. My talk today is about multiverse. It's a probabilistic uh, programming language and system that enables causal reasoning using important sampling. Multiverse was created by me and my colleagues, uh, including Logan Graham, who has made equal first author contribution, whilst we were all at Babylon Health. And I'm currently with Equal, a digital healthcare startup in London, UK. And Logan is going to present as a poster later today. And uh, there is, uh, the paper is on archive. You can search multiverse pair of uh, Graham, for example, or go to this link. And there is also code available on GitHub, including all experiments. And uh, the structure of the talk, I'm going to talk about causal reasoning first and the factuals and then how it uh, lays uh, with probabilistic programming. Uh, and uh, I'm not going to talk about counterfactual inference in terms of how to automatically derive uh, causal models, and I'm not going to talk about other types of probabilistic models, which are, for example, not directed uh, generative models. I'm not going to talk about discriminative models in which you also can do uh, counterfactuals or about hybrids, but that's also a very important to topic as well, of course. So uh, how I usually think about this, we have a world and we obviously limited to how we can perceive and uh, what information can about get about the world, uh, but we get data from the world and what we can do with this data, we can measure correlations, for example, of different form. And even to measure correlations, you need some model and you need to start thinking about queries. Uh, you can run posterior queries using Bayesian inference, interventional queries, and counterfactual queries. And I personally believe all queries are important. And uh, depending on the question, we are, would like to ask about particular aspects of nature. We need to choose this or that query. And uh, then we do inference once we have the query. And in terms of the model, we usually have uh, some events, processes happening in the world. They might be represented as random variables, for example, X, Z, and Y. And we usually think there is some distribution over them and often things are not independent. And then we have some uh, uh, structure, uh, some dependencies, some causal model, and uh, we can do it manually, automatically, for example, using causal inference or uh, getting help from uh, subject matter experts. So let's say we have this model. Uh, we can, for example, consider a very simple model like X, Z, and Y, where X and Z are normally independently distributed, and Y is some normal distribution where mean is some function of X and Z. But for Simplicity, let's assume it's just a uh, sum of X and Z. And also for simplicity, let's assume that the noise is additive. So epsilon is distributed according to normal zero one. And I want to emphasize this additive nature of the noise because when we work with structural causal models, we need to explicitly mention what exactly the function is, including functions for the noise and just to briefly talk about uh, structural causal model framework to which we relate this work. Uh, there are exogenous variables and they're usually probabilistic and there are endogenous variables and they're usually observable and they're usually deterministic. I'm not going to give uh, precise definitions as part of this uh, short talk, but for the book by definitions, please refer to the articles uh, and books by Per et al. Uh, so for in multiverse and for this talk, I'm going to mix in uh, all types of random variables. So we just would assume there is uh, different nodes and exit epsilon and y are random variables. Although y, for example, can be a delta, a random procedure, which just takes values of exit and epsilon and 
just an identity function of that. And for the posterior query, we know how to calculate them in progressive programming as well. And uh, yeah, we can use Bayesian inference, for example, exact or approximate. And why we do it? Uh, for many different reasons, we calculate posterior uh, observational queries. For interventional queries, and it's a, a different type, for example, y given do uh, z equal 3, we have a different approach to calculate it. We need to modify the model. So let's say we have a bit more sophisticated model w and v, and we uh, modify the model, we remove connections between w and v, and we just set z to 3. So that's how we do interventional queries. And why we would like to do it, for example, to understand what might happen if we intervene on some of the uh, variables. For example, it's especially important if it's, for example, unethical to do such intervention in a real world. Again, I assume we have the model and we can intervene in this model. And again, out of the scope of this talk, uh, do calculus, which rules allow to transform expressions with do, as per Perl at all, the, and the identifiability of a query can be established by repeatedly applying the rules of do calculus to the query until the final expression no longer contains a do operator such that the final do free expression can serve as an estimator of the query, if that's possible, of course. And uh, in multiverse, we calculate reasoning, uh, causal reasoning queries given a fully specified model using approximate inference, and we will touch this in a moment. A brief example to illustrate the difference between associational or observational and interventional queries. So here we uh, can calculate the probability of lung cancer, that it's true given smoking is true, but there might be some other factors which affect both smoking and lung cancer. And to factor out this influence of other factors, we can just compute if we would like to interventional query, what's the probability of lung cancer if we definitely know that we force the patient to smoke again in a virtual environment, but it's not because of other factors, it's just because exactly we intervene on that variable, and that is the difference and one of applications of interventional uh, queries. And now for counterfactual queries, uh, we have, uh, for example, a query like this, where we're interested, what's the probability of why uh, prime would have been if we have observation on y equal two, and we had forced one, in this case, y, uh, to be z sorry z to be equal to three we intervene upon z uh, that and to calculate this counterfactual query we need to do posterior inference over all nodes given evidence y equal two and then in that posterior new model with this observation we need to intervene z to be equal to three and then we can uh, predict y prime what's its value and it's a uh, contradictory to the evidence that y is equal to 2. And uh, there are a few examples of counterfactual queries. Uh, for example, we might be interested in a model where there is patient history and treatment and some uh, noise variables and patient recovery depends on all of this. And we're interested what would have happened, would have a patient recovered if we know that they have recovered, but if they had smoked, if we intervened on that a risk factor, for example. And another example is what would have, a, would, would have a patient recovered if we know that they have recovered and if we know some of their medical history as part of a durational query and if we know that they had, be, had treatment option A, but if they had had another treatment option B as part of intervention, would they have uh, recovered? It's another example of contrafactual query for medical application. So steps to do contrafactual queries are uh, three steps. There is abduction uh, to get this uh, posterior model intervention to intervene on this posterior new model and prediction to get estimates from the posterior model. And usually intervention is costly if you do it in a simple way because you need to keep this posterior model which already has new correlations and you need to somehow preserve it and do intervention on top of it. So in abstraction, it's quite simple, but once we start implementing it, it's not uh, that simple. And we uh, suggested uh, important sampling for inference for contrafactual queries. And I should note that in parallel, a similar approach was suggested by Robert Ness, 
uh, you can see citations in the multiverse paper. So to do a uh, counterfactual queries using important sampling, we can do four steps. We can get uh, proposals from the uh, prior or proposal distribution. You get weights, you uh, apply observations and apply them to the weights. And then you get the uh, intervened samples. So you modify part of the sample where you apply two operator and also propagate these changes to other nodes, which depend on those nodes. I will show uh, a bit more illustrations in a moment. And then finally, you use the samples from the posterior world, which have been intervened upon with their weights. So it's a, exactly a representation of the posterior world with interventions where weights preserve this posterior part and then you just do counterfactual prediction by uh, calculating statistics of interest. Uh, uh, just, uh, we have uh, five minutes before question. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, to provide an example, we have a network and we sample from the proposal distribution. We receive weights and we intervene, for example, on V and then we intervene on Z and Y because they uh, depend on uh, V and then we receive uh, many samples like this and calculate statistics of interest. Uh, so in multiverse uh, you can do all of this by using uh, by having a model in Python by doing observe and do and predict statements and you can write uh, m m m generally a uh, any Python program and uh, this is an example of a source code in Python. So you have uh, normal uh, ERPs. And then uh, one of uh, important things in multiverse is that each noise variable should be represented explicitly because usually in probabilistic programming, when we observe, uh, for example, normal distribution, any other distribution, we don't explicitly model this noise variable but uh, we must for the counterfactual query and the multiverse does it and you can implement other uh, random procedures, for example, not normal, but some other normal procedure. And uh, that's what multiverse allows you to do. So it's not just incorporating it into the likelihood update, but it also represents a noise for proper uh, counterfactual inference. And for that, you need to implement inverse function for example for normal it's very simple it's observed value minus uh, mean value uh, and you can also have proposal distributions or values because it's important sampling you can uh, do uh, not just counterfactual queries but for example you can do interventional queries and you can do combination of observational counterfactual queries or you can just do actual observational queries uh, there are other PPLs we have, uh, and uh, I'm happy to talk offline uh, about how uh, they relate to multiverse, and you also can look at the paper for the relevant uh, related work section. Uh, we did comparison with Spyro. Again, happy to talk about this at the poster, and happy to discuss other things like propagation of the effect of the interventions, how to make smart proposal in causal models, how to extend to other approximate inference, and uh, also how to represent different causal models as probabilistic programs in multiverse or in other languages. And ultimately, the goal of this prototype is uh, just, I mean, my hope is that these ideas can be incorporated in other uh, more mature and popular prob probabilistic programming languages like Pyro, Gen, Stan, and others. So I just hope these ideas can be incorporated for fast, efficient causal reasoning. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Yura, for the, for the talk. Um, I, I have a question. Um, so can you talk a little bit about uh, the experiences you've had trying to deploy counterfactual reasoning in medical applications and maybe it, it comment on whether those inform the design of multiverse uh, you know, or you know, what you see as the opportunities for counterfactual reasoning uh, in that domain? Yeah, it's a very good question. So I personally have not worked myself on counterfactual inference uh, for medical domain directly. 
I actually mostly worked on uh, posterior observational inference, on Bayesian inference, how we call it. My colleagues, though, at Babylon Health have worked on applications of counterfactual inference. They have a paper, actually, they're also co authors uh, of mine on this paper, uh, Jonathan Richards, uh, Kieran Lee, and Saurabh Jerry, and they have a paper on the uh, counterfactual diagnosis, where they formulate the problem of medical diagnosis as a counterfactual query. And uh, we know examples of uh, medical diagnosis as posterior inference, for example, in QMR and other similar models, but they formulate counterfactual diagnosis as a uh, counterfactual uh, inference and receive interesting results and uh, they do interesting comparison. So I uh, highly recommend to look into ideas in that paper. And actually in multiverse in the source code, uh, there is an example a simple example of that, uh, how you can write it in multiverse, which happened after they uh, made this work. So you can run this uh, using multiverse and see why in some uh, cases it's important to formulate medical diagnosis as a counterfactual problem. Great, uh, thank you. And uh, one last question from the audience, which is, is it possible to map multiverse from uh, Pearl's do calculus formalism, where it, uh, as you framed it, to Rubin's causal inference formalism. Uh, to be fair, I'm not familiar, I think, with uh, details on this. So I don't know, but I'm happy to talk about this offline at the post session. Thank you so much, Yura. Thank uh, you. Our next